Hey, welcome to the channel. In this workshop, what I'm going to be covering is classifiers. Uh, now, some guys hate to classify and others don't mind. But, it, but the bottom line is, if you classify your material, your gold yields are higher. Um, it, there's lots of information on why that is, but that's the bottom line. And for some of the applications like sluice boxes, even though some of them claim that you can use them without classifying if you're looking for the highest yield of gold for your effort classification is going to get you there now i've done a video here on decoders prospecting about this classifier basically it's a stainless steel basket that's used for vegetable uh, steaming what i really like about this one is that you're able to shake it like that and that's like a shaker table so your aggregate drops down quickly again if you watch that video you see how fast that's done this that's a Garrett super sluice here we have a mine lab that comes with a half inch classifier and the deal here with any of these is you see you can't shake it man you got to do this you know and that's just really ineffective I'm sorry it's ineffective it's not a great way to get that aggregate through that classifier quickly whereas this one going back to here shaker table man she just drops down real quick it's the way to go now now that all that's said and done what I'm looking to do is make a classifier for this little pan here you can see this one I like to use for a sample pan because you got to really sample before you start setting up a sluice box but I want a classifier for this now obviously this is too big way too big and it's not it's not going to do anything but if you're having difficulty finding this this system that I'm about to introduce here may work out for using this pan and that is everybody's got a five gallon bucket and that fits in there like that and if you raise it up with handles you'd have the back and forth action that you need in order for this action to work for the shaker table the other nice thing too these typically fit inside of each other so this is a little smaller than the opening so you could even make a classifier for the top of your bucket uh, to get that shaking action because again when you use these traditional classifiers that they come with they all designed to fit inside of a five gallon bucket that's great but then you can't you can't agitate it you know it's just this kind of action so let's get to it and uh, we'll mark it up first okay so I'm gonna make this as deep as the pan is high. So this pan is about two and a half inches high, so the classifier will be about two and a half inches high. When I cut this classifier here, this should fit inside the classifier for packing. So all I've done was I've just stacked up some wood here, and that'll give me a nice stable place to mark it, and then we'll just Put a Sharpie pen, that's going to be the best thing for this, and then just turn it around, just like that to mark it. Now for drilling the holes, you're better off cutting this first because that way it'll be easier to manage. Uh, you could put it down on the table. I'm going to use a drill press, but you really wouldn't need to have a drill press. You could do that by hand. So now there's our line to cut. So what I found in the past for cutting plastic is to use a saber saw or what uh, some people call a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade and that tends to do a nice job on cutting that. Drill a hole here first and then once the hole is drilled set your blade in there and then cut it out. Okay we've got it cut and this is what you wind up with. Uh, we're going to doll it up with a utility knife just to get some of that fuzz off also to take off that sharp edge. And it sounds like the 
scratching the fingernails on the old chalkboard. I don't even think they have any slate chalkboard anymore. But I wonder if it still makes a sound. I mean, that, that new stuff they got is sort of like a paint. I wonder if you can get the same sound, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now the next thing to do is we're going to create some lines in here and with some spacing, or better yet, now that I just saw this, just take this and put it over the top and then just mark it like that to get your holes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> keep it simple. <laughs> and the other cool thing about this guy, even if you don't have a little pan, it's worth doing this for your five gallon bucket because watch this, it goes right in there and you get that agitation action. Perfect. Love it. It's a little tedious, but it only took me like under 15 minutes to do it. And now, I don't know if you can see it, but it's all peppered out. So the next step is to drill all that out. And I'm going with 3 8 um, I want a little bit bigger than the quarter inch. So that's what we're going to be going. That way I have a quarter inch, 3 8 uh, 20 mesh, and 50 mesh. Okay, so we got that done. And that's it right there. It's still pretty solid. The uh, thing to keep in mind, you don't want to get them real super close, and it's best if you do a line and then stagger the holes so that they're not lining up with each other. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I got two pieces of oak. I suggest some kind of hardwood. I would stay away from like pine, oak, maple. And I will be putting them on the side here like this. And this will, see, that'll get me my back and forth action. To get that arc, real simple, just go like that, scribe it. So before I cut that arc out, um, I thought I'd take it on the edge sander and kind of edge it around, make it a little more comfortable. You could do it with a hand sander or whatever you might have. It's a lot easier to do it now before we put that arc in there because I can grab it square like that. So Okay, now that I got the edges rounded off somewhat, we'll cut this arc here that was just transcribed from the classifier and use the saber saw to cut it. Okay, so obviously cutting this with, on a small piece of wood is a little bit difficult because you've got to hold it and get the blade in there at the same time. It doesn't leave you much room. So I use these two because I actually had two little blocks like this laying around. But it's better to take a piece of wood that's this long, put your mark on here and here, and then go ahead and cut it. Now you've got something to hold on to, and then once you get it cut, then go ahead and take a saw and cut it off here and cut it off there and then round off your edges. So just start with a bigger piece. It's a lot easier and definitely much safer. All right, so in order to utilize the uh, classifier in this pan, I need it down about a half inch into the pan. So, which means I need to raise the handle up a half inch off the base. That should also work okay for when I use it for the bucket. It'll be down a half inch. The reason why you want it is so that you can get this action so that the side of the classifier hits the side of the bucket and shakes that kind of action in order to get your materials classified. So to do that, I'll just use a simple piece of half inch uh, plywood and then just put that right there like that. And now I'm half inch above and then just mark here with a pencil on both sides. Get it nice. While holding it, mark the bottom, then drill a hole, let's say, 
right there, pilot hole there, and right about there. Those two places, take my drill and just drill through there. And again. Okay, and do the same thing to the other side. And then once that's done, then I'll come around this end, probably best just to mark it, and then take it out, drill a pilot hole, and then run your screw through. So make sure you keep them separate. I just marked that A and this one A so that I don't forget. I might even put a washer there to give that some reinforcement. Now uh, the other thing too, you might want to know what's up and what's down because that could go two different ways. Okay, to make it easier, I just kind of like started it in there, but to really torque it down, so I'm going to put it in a vise here to hold it in place. And then uh, I got one of these little angle deals, and that should make it a lot easier getting it in there. All right, so here we have it. Uh, we got a half inch space between there and the top of the wood so when we're using it for a five gallon bucket you can make this any size half inch quarter inch three inch whatever you so choose and for my application here it sets in this little pan my test pan and goes back and forth like that and that's what i was looking for this is really light i bet you this Geez, it's probably less than a pound. Uh, pretty simple to make. You might want to think about using a bucket that's maybe got a broken handle or something, and that way you're not going to be sacrificing a good bucket. And there it is, guys. If you find this information useful, you can help the channel by subscribing, like, make a comment, or share. I would really appreciate it. Until next time, clear skies, and don't forget to watch those rocks.